Hey everyone, it's Maggie about here with a board game vlog of what I played this week and a couple of new games that I haven't yet played, but I'm excited to get on a table. Um, I know I've been out for a while, but it's good to see you all again. Uh, so earlier tonight was my first uh, live Periscope cast thing. Uh, so Brian and I were goofing around. I had gotten home from a game night with some friends out at my store and uh, we had played Traders of Osaka and I thought it would be a cool opportunity to try out Periscope, see how it works and show Brian the game that I bought and brought home for him. <laughs> so uh, things I learned, uh, people that watch on desktops will see your Periscope sideways unless you film vertically which is the worst feature for an app that I've ever seen. So hopefully that'll be fixed sooner than later. Uh, we didn't quite catch on to that right away because we were filming on a tablet and then watching on a tablet. So everything looked fine because our tablet was sideways. But for, I guess, a majority of people are watching on desktops. So I will know that in the future. Um, we also talked afterward, and I think I was correct, I should have done the game with explanation, a little bit of the gameplay, and then cut off the cast while we played and did another cast to do like a post-mortem and chat about the game. Uh, there's not really any reason for us to have an hour-long Periscope video out in the world watching us, you know, play the game. Uh, it's probably not that thrilling for anyone, but there were quite a lot of views. There were like 100, 100 views at midnight on a Monday, so um, Periscope is a thing. It's not I, it's not perfect yet. We only had you know a few viewers at a given time, but it was it was fun to goof around with, and I I like the format. I like the live interactive stuff. I wish I could figure out how to see the chat, or maybe no one actually chatted the entire time, which seems unlikely for my friends. But I will figure that out next time. That's my new goal. <laughs> so back to Traders of Osaka. This is a new old game. It's a re-theme of Traders of Carthage. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar with the designer. It's Susumo Kawasaki, but uh, the game is kind of a set collection game. You draft cards in a very unique way. You either pick them up as coins, or if you can, purchase the market out and they become uh, merchandise that you can sell on a boat later on. Um, and the boats move around and the boat that gets to the end sells a bunch of merchandise and any boats left out in the ocean will drown the merchandise you have of their colors. Uh, that's a lot of explanation, but it's it's neat. The scoring system is bonkers, ridiculous, and kind of cool. And I'm excited because the game, though it comes in this random wonky Z-Man box. Uh, if I take out the board, it's going to fit in a deck box, no problem, and then I can carry it around in my purse, and I can play it anytime with people as they're walking by, and it'll be great. All I need to do is draw five dots on a piece of paper, and that is a substitute for the board, no problem. Uh, so, Trader of Osaka, excellent two thumbs up, goofy, goofy game, really enjoyed it. Um, I also had a couple things come in the mail, and you guys know I usually buy local, but some games are only available uh, if you order them online, and so uh, today was Bounty Town. Uh, Bounty Town is a game from my friends Kyle and Michael. Uh, it is released by Victory Point Games, so you can buy it through their, through their website, or um, because Bounty Town got enough copies sold, they've actually put it into distribution, so you'll start seeing it at local stores, and I'm sure it's on some on online outlets at this point. Uh, but it's a Old West shoot 'em up kind of game with location cards and poker hands, and this will get played and reviewed because they are friends of mine, and it's awesome. Uh, hopefully the game is super good. Uh, I know it's on the casual side, so it's probably going to be a little late for my group. I'll try and play it with a few different groups and see if I can get some real responses to it. Um, if it would work out as an end-of-the-night game, that's ideal, because it goes up to six players, and I'm excited to see if the six works. Um, so I, I will be honest about it, but I, I have really high hopes, and everyone I know has played it and loved it, so that's a good thing. Um, and other one, and I will definitely get this played this week, is Craftwagon. And this is the Matthias Kramer. It's got pretty cars in it. Um, I have read super mixed reviews on this game. Uh, I have seen 
reports that it's super swingy, but Matthias Kramer has excellent taste in games. Glenmore is freaking phenomenal for a light game, as is uh, Rococo for kind of a medium game. I have never played Lancaster, which came to my uh, attention tonight. We were having dinner. Uh, my, my new friend Dan from League of Nonsensical Gamers was at the table, and that's one of his favorite designers, and he mentioned that Lancaster is fantastic, and I just, I never picked it up. It's a queen game, which I, I don't own a lot of their games, and the title and everything else kind of passed me by, so I didn't realize that, you know, it was Matthias Kramer, and it's very good. I know I've Googled it before, but now I have a real excuse to go pick it up. So those two are coming up this week, and the other one I played this week that was new, 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 uh, was Marco Polo. Uh, so Marco Polo uh, is a dice placement game, two to four players, from Z-Man, from the designers of Zulk and the Mayan Calendar game. Uh, the last game I played of theirs was Corrigan's, which is way more of like a family game with these little lep leprechaun things that jump around the board, and uh, very famously tried to teach it at 4 a.m., uh, extra life to very tired people, uh, but that was always really fun. Uh, Marco Polo itself is dice placement done in the style of an alien frontiers where if you have pairs they go here, and if they're low they go here, and if they're higher than the last one place they go over this other place, and what you're doing is collecting camels and spices and gold and stuff to complete contracts and to race around the board. And as you pick up new places on the board, you get access to either some income or their abilities. Everyone starts the game with a few secret objectives of where they need to be on the board. Uh, the where they need to be on the board are super hard. The scoring is kind of funky for that part of it. Um, what I did enjoy was the game felt very solid and the decisions seemed interesting. What I... And just a first play, so initial play, uh, what I did not enjoy at all were the beginner player abilities, the, the asymmetrical nature of the game. Two of us at the table seemed to just have some of the cool, fun, hard-to-make decisions taken away from us because our player abilities just were bananas. Uh, I could just make my dice any number uh, on a given turn, so I didn't even have to like pre-program them or anything, I just got to pick what what values my dice were. And someone else at the table didn't have to pay a penalty for placing their dice uh, on top of yours, which normally would cost you money in the game. Uh, and so we both had a lot of our decision making taken away from us. I did not enjoy this, my opponent didn't seem to mind that much, but uh, I hope to retry it with different player abilities and see if I like them. I really hope some fan comes up with a different set of player abilities, maybe. Just something, they're, they're so strong, they're so swingy, that I, I worry that that will never be satisfactory for me. Uh, but I, I, I'm more than willing to try it again, and the base game was so solid. I wonder, at some point during their playtesting, they must have decided that the base game needed to be shaken up a little bit by those player abilities that it wouldn't stand on its own. Um, so I, I would be tempted just to try it with without the player abilities at all. Uh, but that, that's just me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was my week. Uh, I will... See you all again soon. If you don't follow me on Periscope yet, it's at MaggieBot. I will be doing more soon that is better and shorter and announced beforehand. And I will figure out how to check the chat. So those are the things I would like to do. Um, I will play some Croftwagon, some Bounty Town. Uh, I don't have any other new games scheduled this week. But uh, I will be back to talk about Queen's Architect pretty soon. Uh... I can't, can't recommend it, but I'll talk a little bit more about that next time. Uh, I'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Um, and then she finds the button. And goodbye.